Hello, everyone. Welcome to session five of our small group series, Built on the Rock. I have a newsflash for you. The world is a messed up place. I know. Duh. What would make our world a better place? Now, that's pretty easy. If we could only get rid of so-and-so, the world would be a much better place. Now, be honest. You've said it. You've thought it. You've felt it. But is it really ever that simple? Is it a person or a policy that is the problem? Or is it deeper than that? If you've been along for the ride with our, on our little journey here, you already know the answer to that question. It's a spiritual problem, which means we need a spiritual solution. Now, before we get to the spiritual solution, I want to take a moment to appreciate just how damaging it is when we attack the wrong enemy. Suppose someone has offended you with his or her choices. You think the world would be a better place without this person's influence. Perhaps this person was affiliated with a group that may or may not have encouraged the action. Maybe the whole group should go. And what if the group happens to be a part of a political party or holds a certain ideology? It's not a huge jump to think that all the people who belong to that party or hold that ideology should be removed from influence. But really, is that enough? Certainly, people who think such things are less than human and deserve any mistreatment that might be coming to them. And anybody who would consider even coming to their defense would certainly be on their side. So... It seems the battle lines have been drawn. It's us versus them. Maybe they should all just die. I wish I were exaggerating. I wish this were one of those examples that used an unrealistic scenario to make a point. It is not. When people see other people as the problem, hatred nips at their heels and spreads like wildfire. Unfortunately, the church is just as susceptible to this progression of hatred as any other gathering of sinners on the planet. That is, if we take the bait and fight the wrong battle. Remember, this is a spiritual problem, and it needs a spiritual solution. What if we thought differently about the people who offended us with their choices? Rather than see the person as the problem, we recognize the fact that these people have the same spiritual heart disease that we do. Perhaps they have different idols, but their idols require a sacrifice all the same. And what if we felt compassion for the people rather than trying to cancel them? What if we tried to understand them, not to excuse their sin, but to learn how best to love them despite their sin? What if we sought to relate to their struggle and before ever throwing ourselves into the mix to help, took a good hard look at ourselves so that we wouldn't be the blind leading the visually impaired. What if we offered forgiveness? What if we could make peace? Isn't that a better battle to fight? Isn't that how God wins the war? So many of us are expert warriors, but we've trained for the wrong battle. We've been fighting people, 
when we should have been fighting evil. Jesus didn't come to fight people, but rather he saved them by fighting the ultimate spiritual battle, even though it cost him everything. He invites us to the spiritual battlefield and equips us with spiritual armor. It's not easy, but it's the best battle you'll ever fight.